See you later. Alright, now that Wesley's dropped off to daycare, time to go home and have some fun. Alright, so my son is uh, dropped off to daycare. Uh, just picked up the truck. And I'm going to go try to find a spot uh, where I can do a little walk around video. I'd like to start off this channel with a little walk around video of the truck I'll be working on most of the time, which is this Ranger. We're going to go see if we can find something that's wide open enough to do this. I don't want a ton of people around. So let's go see what we can find. So this is my 1996 Ford Ranger. Right, so what we'll do is we'll start from the front and work our way back. All right, and the farthest thing out front here is gonna be the lights on the bumper. Uh, these are the KC uh, six inch Pro Sports. Now, I kind of cheaped out and didn't go all HID. So we have the two outsides HID and the one center is the halogen. Now what I do with that is I stick the clear covers on the outsides and then I put an amber cover on the uh, center. Uh, and those KC lights are mounted on a Adams Fab bumper. So my buddy John, he has a little side gig, kind of builds bumpers and uh, trucks on the side. So uh, he ended up doing the front bumper for me. He actually did the rear one too. And the skid plate aluminum uh, came from Tommy from TT Motorsports. So basically I just measured everything out and sent him the dimensions. And he ended up cutting it all out for me and sending it here. All right, then we got that new fancy chrome grill. She looks blinging. All right, anyway. So under the hood, we have a stock 4.0. Uh, it's got 254,000 miles on it. A lot of those miles are actually dirt miles, believe it or not. This truck, uh, I've had it for, I think, six years now. And uh, done a lot of, lot of off-road trips in it. And she's held up so far, so I'm just going to keep running her. But anyway, so um, like I said, bone stock 4.0. Um, giant Motorsports engine cage. Um, I ended up having this dimple dyed uh, center section before I ordered the shock hoops. So I had that I had that center section for a good four years, I want to say. A buddy of mine gave it to me and I just barely now uh, got the engine cage in it. So uh, I called Jeff from Giant. He sent me the shock hoops by themselves with no shock mounts on them. So uh, my buddy Josh and I uh, ended up mocking all this up and uh, we put the shock tabs where we wanted it instead of where Jeff would put them if the beams were extended because this truck is uh, stock width, just cut and turn. So. All right, and the truck is held up by uh, FOA uh, 2512s. I did end up adding the, uh, the king sliders in there. I took the FOA ones out and put a, put a better slider in there. FOA 2.0 uh, bump stops, which they were fours, and I shortened them down to two. Uh, Cartec limit straps. So you can see the uh, giant engine cage in there. It's all bolted in. So basically just lay this thing in, uh, mark all your holes, drill everything out. And so the entire front end on this truck is bolt on. Switch to this side. I don't know if you can see it, but you might be able to see a little better on this side. So uh, I ended up cutting out all that plate for the uh, bump stop brackets. And uh, my buddy Josh helped me weld those up too. So uh, engine cage and bump stop brackets are all bolt on. So for any reason, if I ever wanted to take this kit off, I don't have to cut anything. All I gotta do is just unbolt everything. So that's that makes it nice. Uh, extended brake lines, those are from Camberg. We have a uh, coolant catch can that I shoved up in here in, uh, in the fender well. That is a Jazz uh, one quart. 
All right, so back on this side, uh, just kind of wanted to show the brake setup a little bit. So we have the proportioning valve here, and um, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you adjustability for the rear disc brakes on the uh, Explorer 8.8. Um, going from drum to disc is gonna give you a little bit different pressure, so that'll let you fine tune uh, the brake pressure in the rear. All right, and under the truck we have cut and turn Dana 35 beams. They've been trussed, plated, and cut and turned. Uh, we have the AutoFab uh, beam pivot bracket there that I upgraded to change uh, from the factory one because I ended up cracking the factory one. So you have extended radius arms and the extended radius arms come back here and they connect to a transmission cross member which holds the transmission mount. All right, and back up top, we have these uh, KC, these are the C3 series uh, amber pods with their new vinyl covers, which are pretty cool. We have Glassworks front fiberglass fenders. Uh, I think they're like a two or three inch bulge. I ended up picking these up from Camberg. Uh, I actually went down there and picked them up for my buddy Carlos who works there. So I ended up getting these and the extended brake lines uh, from Camberg. Uh, moving on, we have the mirrors. The mirrors are from Next Gen Off-Road. All right, wheels and tires. Uh, the tires are the new KO2 uh, BFG All-Terrains. Um, the wheels are KMC Enduros. I ended up having the uh, beadlock rings powder coated. Um, in between all that is worn manual locking hubs. And inside those is the uh, Blitzkrieg uh, Motorsports locking spindle nuts, which are Amazing. If you guys don't have them on your TTB Dana 35s, I'd suggest you that you do. Uh, back down here, the transmission mount is uh, energy suspension, and it's probably one of the best transmission mounts I've ever had on this truck. I've probably went through maybe four or five of them, uh, just like the factory style, and uh, this one here has been uh, holding up pretty good. So if you guys need the part number or something like that, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll get it to you. Alright, so I turned the truck around, uh, that way the sunlight could uh, show you guys the bed better. So what we have here is a, a bed cage that I designed. I cut, built, welded up. It's pretty much the first big project that I've ever done by myself on this truck without any help from friends who are better welders. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's all 90 degree cut. It's inch and three quarter uh, DOM. I feel like it works pretty well. Um, I. I got everything as, as good as I could get it. Uh, now you'll notice everything is elevated. So like the fluid holder over there, the ammo can, or the action packers. Um, a couple months back, I used to have a camper shell on this truck and basically I would sleep back here. So the tire was out. I had a tire gate back here, which had the spare tire on it. Um, camper shell just wasn't working out. It was falling apart and it was kind of ripping my bed apart at the same time. So that's why I went ahead and did the bed sides. Um, the bed sides I got from my buddy Khalil and he didn't know what the brand was and they all look the same to me so um i don't know the brand either but uh they're in decent shape i clean them up did a lot of work to get them mounted on over here we have a uh, fire extinguisher and quick disconnect uh, that's all from cartech uh, the fluid holder is a uh, artec industries it is their six quart uh, holder i want to say it's called the six gun but don't quote me on that um awesome awesome holder it works really well um we got the action packers um got a bunch of tools and stuff in there um as far as that goes uh, we do have a spare drive shaft down there as well um if you know my history with the uh, rear drive shafts you'll you'll know why that's there um 
let's go back over here so the shocks the shocks are 2.5 by 14 uh, king triple bypasses with fend resis all right now in the very back we have our ammo can which i designate this for a trash can uh full size spare uh speed strap y strap for the spare tire which is from cartech also uh, and this guy over here this is my little makeshift jack mount setup so basically you got your harbor freight <laughs> ammo can which i modified um, i took the lid from another ammo can flipped it upside down gave it a base bought some spacers to elevate the can uh, keeps it nice and tight thing really isn't going anywhere um, so i tack welded some all thread inside the lid here so basically i can spin these wing nuts without the whole thing spinning i uh, just built this little bracket the jack extension that's actually from a guy that i followed on desert rangers for a while and on instagram uh, his name is justin mx so i don't think he carries or makes these things anymore but it is a uh, it is kind of cool to have real quick let me show you how this jack mount works it's pretty cool all right now at the very back of the truck uh we have the adams fab rear bumper which has been modified completely uh like i said earlier it used to have a tire swing here so there was a hub here i ended up cutting this down uh i capped the tubes uh after all that was done, he came back through and uh, we put this step on here and uh, it just added a nice touch. All right, and let's get into the truck for the last thing. So if I could show you here. All right, so as far as suspension goes, you guys already saw the shocks. So we have the Kartec uh, shock mount brackets that uh, attach to the U-bolts on top of the leaf spring. We have a Deaver F23 pack. We have a factory style uh, shackle with a Kartec drop hanger. Uh, the axle housing is from a 2001 Ford Explorer Sport. It is uh, disc brakes. My Obviously it's all the stuff that you would get in a uh, Ford Explorer axle. Um, I did just redo the gears. Uh, so it's all brand new Ford racing gears in there. I stuck with 373s because I didn't want to mess with the front just yet. So that might be changing later, but uh, rough stuff diff cover. Uh, our tech industries truss which the truss is actually for a full size 8.8 .8. and so when i put it all together and then ended up doing the shock setup with the bed cage and everything uh i had to clearance it back out because it went almost all the way to the u-bolts so that got all clearance uh, now i have plenty of up travel all right so the last thing i'm going to show you is the interior so it's basically stock aside from the seats uh the seats are mastercraft uh sportsman's so they're, they're a little bit low. bolted to the factory sliders i'm still running the factory seat belts until this truck gets caged which that'll be on a different video but it is going to get done i promise um we have communications here so we have the rugged radios vertex standard just 50 watt radio um we mob armor cell phone mount um basic controls there you got a couple switches over here um now let me get in here and show you this little cool setup that i did so this little center console deal is a smaller ammo can and it's got the intercom bolted to it it's got a, a kc cyclone light bolted to it so i run that at night so it kind of uh, illuminates the cab red which looks really cool um we have some switches here uh so we have all the bumper lights are on individual switches so your left, center, and right. And then during the daytime, like I was saying, I shut the two far ones off and keep the center one on with the amber cover. Um, and down here even farther is the line lock for the rear end. So basically, um, right now it's locked. So um, if it was on, if the truck was on, um, you just hammer down on the brake as hard as you can and turn the valve and it locks the rear brakes uh, because I do not, I no longer have a uh, e-brake setup so i deleted the entire e-brake system so there's not even a pedal down here um yeah that's it really so you can open this up um i usually put my wallet or my keys in here uh, when we're out in the desert so i don't lose them um other than that it's just a goofy little sub fire extinguisher all right guys well that's it um i'm sure i missed a ton of stuff so if you guys have any questions or anything just uh leave a comment or just let me know um yeah, it's a fun little truck. I try to keep it as clean as possible, um, but I do still use it, so don't let the cleanliness fool you. Um, 
I try to use it as hard That's as I can. The reason why it's going to get a, a cab cage because I feel like I'm driving the truck as fast as I could drive it before it starts getting a little bit too crazy. So once uh, once the cab cage is done, uh, I think I might rebuild the motor. Um, probably do a bunch of other little stuff uh, that way I can you know have a bunch of videos uh, to show you guys on my channel um, I would like to go 35s at one point right, with the front as narrow as it is um, I don't think it's gonna work if I want to keep the air conditioning and all that inner fender well structure so um, but I'll let you guys know you guys will see all my videos and all the different stuff that I'm gonna do um, I do like to do a lot of little projects a lot of little cleanups a lot of little changes so I'll go ahead and, and film a bunch of that stuff too and uh yeah like i said if you have any questions comments just let me know um subscribe please if you can that'd be great and uh that's it all right guys Peace out.